views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Fashionista's exclusive interview. I am your host, Floris Bello. It is with excitement I announce that as of today, every Thursdays at 3 p.m., we will be hosting our Bellas exclusive interviews live from Bronx Neck Studios. Today, it is a pleasure to welcome award-winning entrepreneur, advocate, and cultural intelligence expert who throughout her career has been paving the way for many generations of Latina leaders. Everyone, join me in welcoming the co-founder and CEO of Cultural Intel and CN Plus, Lily Jill Valletta. Lily, thank you so much for joining us. What a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me, Fleddy. I am excited that we're doing this. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Starting the new year right. I like that. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And this is our goal to highlight Latinas like, like yourself that have been paving the way and have mm -hmm. been a role model um, and setting stone for the Latino generations to come. And it is an honor. I don't know if anyone knows, but we have actually known each other for since 2010. A long time. And it's so excited to see your growth, to see how much you have accomplished throughout the Thank years. And you. I am so proud not only to call you an advisor, a friend, but a Latina who's really, really making things uh, work out there, a change maker. Thank for you. For God's sakes. Thank you. So, That's a lot. And now yeah. I have to live up to this in this, pr in this interview that we're doing. But I mean, it's funny you mentioned 2010. Because 2010 was when I literally had my idea on a napkin for the company yeah. that we have today. So see, life unfolds in surprising ways. So I'm excited to be here. I know, I know. Lily, now tell us what is it exactly that you do? I know that you do hold a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, as yeah. I think the short of it is I am in the business of cultural intelligence. And what that means is... Uh, bringing to big corporations the data, the strategy, and the marketing intelligence that they need to win in today's fast-changing and diverse world. So we are hired by some of the most iconic global companies, which I always pinch myself for that, because they're entrusting us to help them discover new ways to grow their business, be inclusive, and put us Latinos and other uh, diverse segments of the market at the center of their strategy. So that's what we do, and I love it. That is amazing, Lily. Now, I know that um, you originally from Bogota, Colombia, uh -huh. right? And I know that your story is as impressive as, uh, as many as I have heard in the past. Um, coming to the U.S. at the age of 17 and that's leaving right. your family behind, tell us how, how was that change? Yeah, so it's... I think a lot of us who are proud immigrants and Latinos share a similar journey. So um, I'm going to date myself, but it was in the early 90s when I graduated high school in Colombia. And that was the time when Colombia was going through a very difficult moment. So right now, people look at Netflix and Narcos, right? And it's like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy. But it was a very difficult time back then now Colombia is amazing so everybody mm -hmm. should come mm -hmm. anyway uh, but at that time my parents had a choice and an opportunity to send me to the United States instead of staying to go to school in Colombia and that took a lot of sacrifice it was very expensive and I couldn't speak English so <laughs> oh it God. was I think that was the excuse the fact that I couldn't speak English because then the idea was go to the United States learn and then you'll be back so it was supposed to be an English as a second language program. And that was a big bet because I was a kid, 17, by myself with a suitcase and a pocket translator because we didn't have iPhones to like ask Google. Oh my and 
and just come with a big dreams and a student visa and see what happens. So I ended up in the United States in the great state of Texas, of all places, uh, because my parents actually found a very small private like Christian school where I could be like protected and safe in the dorm mm -hmm. uh, while I was learning English. And that was my first kind of like encounter with this American experience. So wow. it was very unique and very strange in many ways because it, it, it was lonely for me. It wasn't easy. And I would say the first couple of months I was crying myself to bed every day because oh. I was so frustrated I couldn't express myself. Um, so I'll stop there. So that was the beginning coming to this country <laughs> to learn English and here I am I guess I never left um, but the rest is history and I guess there was a greater purpose and here I am yes and you know a lot of the times um, I could understand that that transition is frustrating yeah, yeah. it's I, I too went through that but tell me about did you have anyone in the school that mm. that helped you obviously get through um, and I'm sure with that with the support of your parents, right? Yeah. You'll be able to uh, continue like that back strength and continue yeah. on. What, what kept you with that vision, with the yeah. eagerness to keep on while you were in school? So I think I've always been um, self-motivated and driven. And I, I mean, it comes from my upbringing and my parents always kind of like having a very high standard of excellence and me pushing myself. So I was always like a straight A student in high school and I was an athlete, I was in the track team. So I was always kind of competing with myself and I knew I wanted to do something great. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know exactly what, uh, but I had this itch of leadership inside of me. But I think it was very humbling because coming to a whole new country where I didn't know anything and the language was a barrier, was frustrating because I knew I couldn't be my full self. Mm -hmm. And I'm sharing this and pausing with this because I know a lot of people and hopefully <coughs> some folks that are watching may feel like, oh my gosh, my accent, I don't speak English, I'm just starting, this is so hard. It is hard, but it's that bigger dream and believing that you can that will take you through. But I had two secret weapons <laughs> along that it? path. What is it, what is it, tell us, share, so, share. You need, and again, it, it, everybody's belief systems are different, but in mm -hmm. my case, it was like my faith and knowing that I was held by something greater than myself. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is for you, in my case, I do believe that God has a purpose. So when it, when it was really, really hard, I knew I could get on my knees and ask for help from a higher purpose and mm -hmm. place. And that really helped me. It, it really does like anchor you and, and keeps you like, strong and humble. So that's one thing, knowing that I was playing for something bigger than myself. So what should I do? Where should I go? God showed me the way. So that was a big part of it. And the second secret weapon is a great friend. I think we underestimate sometimes in this era of Facebook where you have 5,000 friends, mm -hmm. the power of a real friend. Mm -hmm. And my best friend, so shout out to her because I'm going to see her soon, my <laughs> Dominican <laughs> sister from another mother and father. Um, Jaddy was my um, roommate eventually my second year in college. And she was there as a sister that I didn't have and as somebody that I could lean on. And I think you need to have someone that you can be real with mm -hmm. um, that will walk you through those difficult times or be there just to laugh and cry together and have fun together as well. Um, and I had that. So it was a combination of my own self-motivation because I was truly motivated. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to learn. I wanted to progress and prove people wrong that me not knowing English and having an accent at the beginning, then it went away. I figured that out. But anyway, that <laughs> it didn't make me any less playing for something bigger than myself and having an amazing friend by my side that could be there so that we could laugh and cry together late at night. <laughs> I think that's amazing how God, when you, you said it, the yeah. weapon number one, yeah. right? prayer and God. And I think that when you pray and God understands your heart, and yeah. he knows because he puts the wants and the need in each one of you through prayer yeah. and we don't even know it just happens automatically and i think it's amazing how he was able to send that angel and send jaddy over so that you guys could 
could continue, right, to push exactly. uh, forward. But I think that natural leaders have that eagerness to, whenever you encounter mm -hmm. a new challenge, you say to yourself, what's next? Like, I feel like yeah. I need to, and I, and I, um, and I applaud you for that. Thank because you. coming by yourself, a Latina, to another different country, to go dorm, you know, for us Latinos is a big deal to dorm, right? And our yeah. parents are like, no, 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 no. Exactly. <laughs> and it's I very feel like scary. That, no, it is. It is. It is very scary. And you know what? Um, that eagerness, I always say this, um, not to be mean, but to put fire in your pants and fire in your skirts. Um, there is no shortcut for excellence. Um, even when you have money or are well connected, which is not what I had, really. I'm in a whole new country where I don't have like lifeline called like my wealthy tío or something. No, it's you're making your own path. And the only way that will prove others wrong is by demonstrating your capacity, your capability, and that comes with hard work. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, I ended up learning how to speak English, but to me, it wasn't enough just to show up to class. I used to ask the professors to give me an extra hour or two to stay after exams because I knew it was going to take me longer. Mm. And I did. And I graduated with like a 3.8 GPA. Funny story of why not 4.0, but that's for another time. Mm, but, <laughs> um, so high. but I was, and it was like economics and finance and, you know, accounting. Like these are like, serious subjects, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it was the, the pursuit of excellence, which I think is that extra work that sets you apart from being ordinary people to really being extraordinary. And it comes mm -hmm. with dedication and discipline and hard work. It's not just a handoff or you got lucky. So it's funny because people like may see us right now and they will look at you doing this great thing, or maybe kind of hear my story, and you sometimes see the glory at the end and forget the story. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I am hoping that we pull some of the strings of realness and not to discourage people, but the opposite, to yeah. show them that you gotta be focused, you gotta like not take no for an answer, ask for help, and just go for it. Yeah. Go for it. And that is the reason why Bella Fashion is a success, then why, taking the focus out of the celebrities because everyone focus on the celebrities and yeah. open culture. Who also have crazy stories <laughs> yes. and you just forget. And they just <laughs> miss the whole big gap, right? Because there's a gap that they're not seeing. Yeah. And highlighting Latinas like you, it's where we come in and we share those stories mm. of how it was. Tell us, did you always, I know that you went to school for business, correct? Yeah. Did you always knew when you were younger that you wanted to pursue business? Mm -hmm. Like how, how, how did that come into the picture? So it's interesting because my parents were both like in, in technical fields. So my mom, rest in peace, I see her as my highest source of inspiration academically and all that because when she went to school, women are not going to like engineering school and here she was going and getting this like chemistry degree and then wow. working in like the oil industry in Colombia where she met my dad um, when women are not having like engineering or STEM careers and mm -hmm. she was like mm -hmm. the only one. So I watched them being very focused in education and I think a lot of Latino parents are. You know how we hear like, mija, I may not have money but I'm giving you your education, right? Si, si. It is very like, <laughs> estudia y enfócate, that's all I'm gonna give you and that's great, it is a great gift. Mm -hmm. So I think my parents instilled that in me but I didn't know what. I knew I wanted to push myself and be very kind of challenged what, by whatever. And I think this is gonna be like the first interview where this is gonna come out. Ooh. Yes, um, that we are live. I'm live. <laughs> I, because in Colombia was so super hard, and I think it still is generally everywhere, to get into mm -hmm. med school, right? Yeah. So there's no pre-med, you go straight into like years and years of med school from like the beginning freshman year. So I was like, that sounds hard and I'm gonna get in. And I did. <laughs> and I got into some like amazing medical school in Colombia and I did my first semester and I was like the best student, but I hated all of it. Like, okay, I can do like biochemistry, blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, I don't like this. And we did it like una practica, you know how yeah, you do yeah. like this field work, voluntary work, like vaccinating kids in little towns. And I was like, 
this is sweet and cute, but I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> so that is actually when my itch came into like, how about the U.S. and English? So I did one semester of medical school. Interesting. And I don't think everybody knows this. It was such a like, it feels like ancient history to me now. But then I knew I wanted to be in a powerful place. Like I would envision like the 17 year old version of me, like Lily sitting in a corner office, like being important, but I don't know, I didn't know important in what. So business seems important and knowing money stuff. So I was like, okay, great business finance. I'm just going to do that. But exactly what I wasn't sure. But because I grew up kind of watching parents in like a corporate setting and I would see corporations as like this big, important institutions, mm -hmm. then I thought, and I really did for the longest time until I became an entrepreneur, I, I was like on a career path. Like I'm going to be CEO before 40. Like I was so determined that that was going to be it. But that's what I tell young people now. Don't get crazy if you feel like you don't know exactly what your career path mm -hmm. is going to be right now. Just expose yourself to as much as you can. Give it your absolute, truly best. And that sounds cheesy and cliche, but it's true. Mm -hmm. The best ver is the best version of you coming out in whatever it is you're doing today. Mm -hmm. And through that exposure, you will see where your heart and mind and purpose kind of pull you. I wasn't sure, but I was like, powerful corporate position, I guess, and business must be the way. So that was my first kind of step and a very important one, because otherwise I wouldn't be where I'm at today. That is incredible. Yeah. Like, how does just one say that, right? <laughs> um, I mean, but, I knew it wasn't going to be medical to, school. <laughs> but you do have <laughs> that, that ambition. Clear. No, yes, yes. But you do have to ambition yourself, and you said that you had that from your parents, which is incredible. Yeah. Now, tell us, how was life after college? Like, how, how do you, Yeah. what was your first job? Like, coming, right? So, um, it was very interesting because it was a year when, so I got a job offer. Here's a fun fact, too, because they're now my client. <laughs> but I got a job <laughs> offer from Pepsi. Nice. Because um, I, I was in Texas, and PepsiCo is in Plano, so kind of like mm -hmm. in, in their Texas base, Frito-Lay and all that. But I didn't take that, so hey, <laughs> um, my life was going another way. And I got this very fun job offer to move to Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, do I stay in Texas or go to like the happiest place on earth? And it was um, a management leadership program. And I encourage young people to look into those. Most mm -hmm. companies and corporations have these two or three year accelerated programs that when you graduate, either from business school or your MBA, they put you through this like, almost like a, a manufacturer accelerated way to learn. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that was a place of privilege for sure, because yeah, I got it. into this program, it was very competitive, so I had to earn my spot. And it was a program that, uh, my first assignment was when Florida Hospital, which is a healthcare system in Florida, was doing a joint venture with Walt Disney Mm. or they did this partnership this is the coolest thing to create the hospital of the future which right now it's live and standing it's in the town of celebration and celebration is inside disney property where the parks are where oh, magic nice. kingdom and epcot and everything is celebration is like there so any town of the future and this was part of the original vision of like walt disney was to create like this almost like this utopia of a town and I was part of that whole process. And that matters because that was my first exposure to the world of health. And I feel like this was like 98, 99. I got a peek into the future of healthcare and technology. Nice. Which now it's kind of replaying all over again with what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, my first job was there at Florida Hospital on Disney property at Celebration Health being part of this rotational program where you have the VPs being your mentors. That is incredible. From day one, um, <clears throat> they paid for my MBA, which is amazing. Yes. And then, cause <laughs> it would be very expensive. And that way I could extend my student visa too as yes. a foreigner. And then also um, 
companies like Johnson and Johnson and GE, big healthcare companies were partners to this crazy futuristic project. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got introduced to Johnson and Johnson for the first time. Cause they were kind of colleagues in this project as I was doing my rotation at Celebration. Mm -hmm. And that then was how, now I'm getting ahead of the story, but spoiler alert, then I went from that into Johnson and Johnson and that became my big corporate career. But I went through one of these programs and I think it was definitely an accelerated, unique way to have a first job that wasn't a normal first job. Mm -hmm. So I'll qualify that because that is definitely a privileged position that now that I'm older, I realize, oh my gosh, that was not normal. <laughs> that was an that absolute was, blessing. It was a big, big blessing to get exposure so quickly to great things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because God's, God's, God's plans are not our plans, right? I know. And, and, I, and I think that's amazing because that's how we encourage our, our mentees, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to connect them to corporations and nonprofit organizations that are industry-based. And, and these are the type of programs that we do mention to them. Not, ex not per se that. But speaking of, so your first, um, that program, did you do marketing? Is that how you became mm -mm. this big no. uh, marketing? That's the other thing. Well, group? okay, I was freaking out a little bit as a senior when I was graduating because I did do an internship at a healthcare system in Texas, Hughley Healthcare System, and it was me, the business finance gal, I did a finance focused internship and I love numbers. I am a geek. However, when I was doing that internship, I was freaking out because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm too social for this. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be stuck behind spreadsheets. This is Did awful. Did you just say too social? <laughs> yeah. Like, like I want to tell stories with numbers, but I don't want I felt like if I was going to be in a finance track, I was going to be stuck behind the spreadsheet. So I talked to one of my advisors at the business school and he was he laughed he's like don't worry just graduate and get an MBA with a focus on like marketing or something so balance the two worlds you want to be very financially business I mean numbers focused and also add this other MBA marketing you know sex appeal to it and it becomes like right brain left brain together and go for it so I didn't know when I was in my like celebration health rotation it was in operations because the whole mm. the whole purpose of those programs is that they expose you to different functions mm -hmm. in different rotations because the whole point is if you have high potential for being a leader one day you're supposed to have exposure yes yes and they just expose you very early to different functions so no now i knew intuitively that my creative like wires were always on because even at Celebration, when nobody was asking me, I started opening my big mouth and being like, hey, why don't we to do tours in Spanish <laughs> of this amazing <laughs> facility? Because, I mean, there's so many visitors from abroad and executives. I mean, to this day, it's like a benchmark for health of the future. Anybody that's ever in Orlando and cares about this sector should go and just check it out. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would have these ideas that were very marketing driven but I didn't label them as marketing. It was just me kind of saying, why don't we do this? And why don't we create this and make it bilingual and da, 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 da. And it's so interesting because in my rotations, I got shipped to Puerto Rico for a summer because awesome. I was the one that spoke Spanish <laughs> and Florida hospital was buying a hospital in Puerto Rico. And I was the one that was sent to do like the transition and the training of the staff and all of that because of my big mouth, like volunteering and saying, we should do stuff in Spanish. Anyway, so you never know. But w did I have a clear, I'm going to be a marketing leader? No, not at all. Yeah. I think it's a mindset. And mm -hmm. I was just creative in solution and business ideas that had a marketing implication. But I didn't know that was what I was doing. It just happened. <laughs> and like, that's not even the yeah. birth of culture and tell, right? Because no, that's another different that's later. Idea. Oh my God, that is so, uh, is so crazy. exciting. Now, uh, did you have any mentors that, um, oh, yeah. that helped you throughout the way? I know that you mentioned someone that said, hey, not a direct mentor per se, but someone that really 
uh, another angel that got sent, right? So that always, you could be able to. Always, always. And, and you know, people, because mentoring is a thing and there's a label for it. And every young person these days feels like, oh my gosh, I need to check the box and have mentors. Yes, you do, <laughs> but don't overcomplicate it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have people that surround you that are smarter than you and you should always surround yourself with people smarter than you and there are and now we call them mentors so it's not like you're gonna have like a clear request hey joe do you want to be my mentor if you admire somebody and you know they have something to contribute to your growth then that's a mentor mm -hmm. just go after them and have a conversation so it's a relationship that mm -hmm. is earned that it builds trust and that you open up as a candid relationship to share feedback and ideas back and forth mm -hmm. so i always had those and i guess now that i look back oh yeah they were mentors but i didn't call them that yeah yeah um there was a guy at celebration health top executive which was the one that when i got the offer or the opportunity with johnson and johnson told me i don't want to lose you i don't want you to leave here but you need to take that wow that so it's amazing. people that are going to tell it straight to you that mm -hmm. you know that care for your growth and that are better than you in one way or another. And by the way, another mistake we made with mentors is assuming it has to be somebody with a title. I mean, your tia could be an amazing life mentor. Yeah. If it's the person you know you call when you have to get grounded, focus back on what matters and remind you to call your mom more often or something, you know, <laughs> so you have life mentors spiritual mentors, career mentors, mm -hmm. you know, personal development mentors. I mean, your coach at the gym is a mentor. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's knowing that there's breadth and you gotta have them. If you don't have somebody today that you can point to that is the person you call to become better at X, mm -hmm. then that's really concerning. Yeah. Because that means you're kind of like winging it through life on your own and that's really hard. It is. So I had a bunch of those. <laughs> Everyone. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a, a crazy mentor idea when we get to me, to a uh, uh, story, when we get to my Johnson & Johnson chapter, which I think we're now getting ready to whoop. Yes. So what uh, were, what were their crazy. motivational words that they instill in you that are still with you today? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, well, if we stay with that early uh, point in my career, that guy that said, go take it, was the, you know, when you're young, you're afraid to make decisions or make the wrong decisions. Mm -hmm. Actually, when you're young is the best time to make all of the wrong decisions. <laughs> or take risks. Mm -hmm. Don't call them wrong. They're risks. Mm -hmm. Because you have the flexibility, because you're young, and maybe you don't have, you know, other responsibilities like, you know, being married or having kids yet. That is the time to take risks. And mm -hmm. he taught me that. Like he was like, I didn't want to move from Orlando to New Brunswick, New Jersey. Like really, <laughs> but he put it in perspective for me. Yeah. So stuff like that, be willing and open to the opportunities. Cause some people say, I want to grow. I want to get the, that promotion or this, but you're not willing to like take the steps in between so that you set yourself up for that. And for me, it was that move from like sunny Florida to New Jersey. <laughs> so, call New Jersey. Nothing against our New Jersey friends, but hey, it's different. <laughs> did did any of your mentors um, ever tell you you would never make it or you're not good enough? And and what kind of strength backbone did that oh give you? Oh my gosh, there was a guy, and I hope he's not watching. Maybe I should find him and give him a call. But there was this very senior executive, and there was later in my career while I was at J&J, &J, that when he saw me kind of shaking it up and creating all these side projects and things that nobody was asking me to do, which we got to talk about, he called me one day, I'll never forget this, he said, you are like a loose cannon. Like he literally called me that. And I was like, <laughs> so I thought about it. You could take it personally. You learn from course, it. It's course. like, oh my gosh, if I come across like that, that's really bad. But then I was thinking, it's like, is it really loose? Or is it more like a guided missile? That's different. <laughs> you know? What does he really mean by that? But it's like the being the aggressive. Yeah. And I, that's his, that was his kind of like way of saying, like, you're so aggressive and yeah. so going, yeah. like, making so much <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, 
<laughs> no, it's not I'm poof. Sure. It's focused. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, even though it's like. So anyway, but that comment, um, you can totally be crumbled by it or self-reflect, learn for what it means, mm -hmm. and then redefine it for what it is for you. Yeah. Not being blinded because feedback is a gift. Mm -hmm. But maybe in that younger version of me, I was being too loud, aggressive, whatever I was, which I still am sometimes. I need to like focus it, but not letting that define you. Learn, take the good from it, adopt it, keep going. No, and you can actually, <laughs> yeah. when you do call him and if you decide, thank him for it because Look at you now. I right? know. I told him, I did tell him this, that one day whenever I write a book and I'm older and wiser, which is not even close yet, but really a true memoir when life has truly unfolded. Because there's so many things I want to tell that I'm not even telling you here that I think mm -hmm. needs to be written down. But anyway, I told him that he will have his own chapter. Mm -hmm. I did tell him that mm -hmm. I'm going to write a book one day and you're going to be a chapter in it. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> think like, I think I think those things are interesting because they really do, like you said, make us reflect, yeah. make us grow from it. Yeah. And they push us to move forward. Yeah. I mean, if we if God never put those people in our lives, we wouldn't be where we are. We'd today. be so blinded too. Yes. we'll be so dumb. Yes. Like, like <laughs> Chiquita says it, you know, Tordo, Ciega, you know, all of that. <laughs> What were um, what were the challenges faced as a Latina to land a job where where you started off with J and J and PepsiCo that you could tell us? You know, I don't know. I think I discovered and really owned my Latinoness once I was already inside okay. Johnson and Johnson. So maybe because I was coming from the outside, I always found it so weird that this country focused on labels and race it was very strange like even in texas i'm like okay you speak spanish you're supposed to be mexican and i'm like i'm not mexican but they were like oh so where are you from colombia oh pablo escobar and i'll be like oh my gosh the labels i couldn't understand it so i, I think my naiveness towards labels and racial tension kept me maybe oblivious mm -hmm. or blind to it i just wanted to kick butt in the interview in my performance and what i was saying and i didn't let that get in the way however i did realize later in my corporate career both the blessings and maybe the handicaps of this latinoness mm -hmm. that i had to adjust but i didn't discover it until later when i was already in so i guess I could say, no, did I feel like any less when I was going through the process? Maybe that's part of the success. I wasn't mm -hmm. psyching myself up that, oh my gosh, they're gonna look at me as this immigrant minority something. But once I was in, I realized, wait a second. Why, uh, like I even changed the way I dress altogether in my corporate life. Like the way, mm -hmm. like right now, like leopard shoes, red dress, never in a gazillion years. No, no. I would have worn that. It, I was all shades of like gray and black. navy blue yeah. and black, boring <laughs> and boring. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> because I didn't want to like be the, hey, hair mm -hmm. always pulled back or like very different. Um, so I regulated who I really was. Um, but no, maybe it was my own naiveness mm -hmm. that... And sometimes that works. I right? guess. That leads us to be where we are today. But it was later. You know what I did face a lot? Um, age discrimination. Mm. That was very weird to me. And even to this day, people may think I'm like this young kid. I'm like, Hey, about to push my mid forties almost. <laughs> when is my birthday? In two weeks. <laughs> so, and they're like, "Oh, but you look so young." So imagine when I was like twenty-five. I look like I was twelve, and I'm in these corporate big meetings, and I would get the whole like ah endearing thing, and I'm like, "Am I getting age discriminated here? This is weird." So, but I turned it around too. So it's like, okay, if you think I am less equipped or prepared for this negotiation we're getting ready to have or whatever, fine. Put your guard down and I'll surprise you. Because they're <laughs> thinking like this kid or the girl, you know, the the like 
cutesy girl. And I'm like, ah, fine. I'll use it and turn it around and surprise. Lily, you yeah. have you have accomplished so much. Oh my gosh. Um, I know, <laughs> pressure's on you ah! right now. <laughs> but it's, it's just incredible. You have come a long way. You I really have. have come a long way. Um, and it's, it's so, it's impressive. It's mm. not impressive, it's meant to be that way, mm -hmm. right? Because of God's purpose in your life. But it's, it's so inspiring to see you do this. And you have done so much. Um, you have been an advocate for, 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 for small minority owned businesses, right? Mm -hmm. And not only that, but you have also worked with so many incredible, as you had mentioned, high profile clients. Uh, now you're doing something with Oprah. Congratulations yes! on that. Kicking that off with Bucket list, check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, you have come a long way. You are a multi-award entrepreneur winner. Not only you, but your team as well. My team, yes. But it's, it's, it's not it's, just me. <laughs> it's, no, because, of course, the company gets it and the CEOs, right? You yeah. and um, Mr. Ireless. Um, but you have come a long way. Uh, what Can you give us something, some advice um, to a lot of others watching at the moment? Mm -hmm. um, about you and how you got here um so i'm gonna sound repetitive because i said it already it has to be anchoring everything you do on a purpose that is greater than you mm -hmm. and that doesn't have to be churchy or spiritual it could be just knowing that everything you're doing is meant to maybe leave the room or the place or the community or the world a better place Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds maybe very altruistic, but I truly, truly believe in that because mm -hmm. when things are really hard and where maybe the clients are not coming in or you're wondering, oh my gosh, how am I going to make payroll? Like when you're an entrepreneur, the only thing that will keep you motivated is that greater purpose mm -hmm. because it may not be how much you have on your bank account or how many contracts you closed, but it's knowing that you're playing for something bigger. So to me, that has been that pick me up over and over and over again. Now, later in life, now as a wife, as a mom, that becomes even a hundred X, right? Mm -hmm. That the purpose is so much greater than me. So there's definitely that. And then the other thing is you gotta be an expert at what you are pursuing to do. And like I said, there's no shortcut to excellence. Mm -hmm. And that comes with studying every day learning and never stopping the learning journey and knowing that every single day you need to be feeding your mind and your soul to become the best version of you. Yeah. Um, and I think the minute you feel complacent and satisfied is when you lose that desire to, to improve. Mm -hmm. And it's not an unhealthy improvement because I've done that before, so just to keep it real that desire for excellence and position at some point in my life took a toll on my marriage because I was married before and it took a toll on the people I love that I kind of maybe neglected even my own emotional and mental health so it's not worth it it needs to be balanced that's why that mm -hmm. purpose thing comes first and then that undeniable desire to be the best version of you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the other thing uh, that third of those is like if you're being blessed with great purpose and being so good an opportunity that translates into profits and growth and you know money because at the end of the day wealth is a great thing because if you are anchored on purpose that means you can do more good and it becomes this cycle yes. um, so I'm, I'm always on a mission for giving back but not giving back like writing a check to charity but to me is watching my own team grow and provide for their families and buy a home and and keep on growing that so that we're expanding on the growth for everyone that is touching it and making an impact on it so we all rise mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if money is your driver and motivation you will never be satisfied because there's always going to be more mm -hmm. grass is always greener and someone else is, is always going to be richer than you Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it becomes a, like, it will never give you the fulfillment and satisfaction that purpose and impact can give you. Mm -hmm. So I always check myself on that one. Um, 
Lily, yeah. we have to set up another interview ah! so we could talk about culture and tell and all the great things. I can give you a doing. quick one-liner <laughs> on that. It's very um, quick. <laughs> we do have uh, just a few more minutes, and uh, you know, Bella Fashionista has Bella Fashionistas on seven seconds, where we discuss um, your top dress codes and who's dressing you today yes. so these questions are meant to be answered right away okay so um who dresses you this is senia paredes if you believe in latinas buy latinas support latinas yes senia paredes <laughs> who's your favorite fashion designer and top female fashion designer and why Oh my gosh, I love our icons, our Latino icons. So Carolina Herrera, who is so elegant and timeless. Um, Oscar de la Renta, rest in peace. And actually one of his mentees, Raul Peñaranda, yes. is a good friend that I think is on a path to become the next Oscar. So I like our icons because they have shown us that que si se puede. Yes. And that you can be timeless and elegant and beautiful all in one. Now you said fashion icon, right? So yeah. the next question is top shoe designer. Well, this is Sam Edelman. Yes. I actually love them um, because they're very comfortable. So there's a lot of stilettos I've tried. Love those because they are perfect and kind of cushiony at the bottom. Oh, <laughs> well, you already said top five dress codes. So dresses or pants? Dresses. I'm a dress girl. <laughs> blazer or no blazer? It depends. <laughs> if you're looking for an investor for money and to convince people, put that blazer on. Yes, yes. Uh, it's the letters of the kills, which you already the mentioned. The letters. When you're not in work clothes, you are in uh, uh, leggings and super cute shoes. Oh yes. <laughs> makeup or no makeup? Oh, makeup always. <laughs> I'm one of those. <laughs> Sorry. Even when you work out? <laughs> when I work out, I put a little bit of blush and lips because okay. I feel like alive. Blush is like magical. Yes, it is. You look healthy. <laughs> now, you could give us that one minute. Uh, cultural you... intelligence. Yes. Cultural intelligence, I'm on a mission to make everybody culturally intelligent because in today's fast changing and diverse market, it is mathematically impossible for any company to achieve their full potential without cultural intelligence. By the year 2040, we're gonna be a majority minority nation the population under 15, that means the kids, which is the future of America, is already majority minority. Mm -hmm. So unless you have the ability to uh, be aware of and understand cultural insights and data and competence into your business, you're going to fall behind. And I will stand in front of any economist, CFO, mathematician to run the numbers and show you that you cannot do it without cultural intelligence. So it's a business superpower. And I want everyone to have it and know how to turn it on. And you started with cultural intelligence years ago. I remember YouTube yes. channels. <laughs> yes. And watching it in front of red carpet. And now we're <laughs> using technology to give people cultural intelligence in numbers, which is culture intel. And CN puts it to life in the market. So it's all a big party of cultural intelligence strategies and data and business and marketing so that people accelerate growth and everybody wins. Thank you so much, uh, Lily, for joining us. I hope that we could repeat this conversation yes. um, in the near future. Now, remember, you need to be purposeful, purposeful and also um, love what you do. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, please stay tuned for our next interview as we welcome a Latina and entrepreneur in the music industry. This Thursday, January 16 at 3 p.m., it will be live on uh, BronxNet TV, uh, Facebook, on Bella Fashionistas, and also on their YouTube channel. So uh, do not forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and also Instagram at Bella Fashionistas. And also do not forget to follow our media partner, BronxNet, at their Instagram account, Twitter, YouTube, at BronxNet TV to watch all of our interviews please we do welcome you to do that please visit our website and uh our, our website which is two which is bellafashionistas.com and bronxnet.org i want to thank you so much for joining us today uh have a good evening and see you soon bye bye <laughs>